And we believe we can predict tumor resistance with over 90% of accuracy. If only one out of three patients are ba responding to therapy, that's very bad. And one of the challenges with genomic testing is it only affects a very small aspect of our cancer. It only looks at the DNA. And that's interesting because, first of all, it's only looking at one mutation. And we do know that, according to the hallmarks of cancers, that before a cancer cell becomes a, a cancer, um, there must be many mutations changing mobility, anti-apoptotic pathways, um, many other factors influence a cell or many other mutations have to occur until a cancer becomes a cancer. And so the thinking of, oh, we found one mutation and therefore this drug will work, that's pretty naive. And there are many other things, the gene expression, the proteomics, the metabolomic, and then what you said, the tumor microenvironment that is actually a result of the phenomenon of the extracellular matrix as well as the cell-cell interactions. And we, I didn't even plot in here the immune system that also plays a role that is also affected often by chemotherapy, especially when it's dosed in, to the maximum tolerated dose, MTD. And so, therefore, just looking at the DNA is very restrictive. We are now able to create 3D microtumors of the patient's biopsy that retain the microenvironment and the heterogeneity of the biopsy so that we can test dozens of drugs and have a tumor uh, have a response within seven to 10 days. And we believe this can actually double the patient's chance of a tumor response. This gives you a, a little under a little visual of how a confocal image of such a tumor can look like. And in lower magnification, you can actually see here, you have basically an untreated cancer and a fully effective drug. And, and we can measure and quantify with machine learning, uh, et cetera, how they are responding to the different therapies and we translate them to a bar chart so that oncologists can actually see what are the most effective treatment options. And I think that that's kind of what, what we really need to be able to, to help patients. And we believe we can predict tumor resistance with over 90% of accuracy.